In this video, we're going to go ahead and get OpenLaura up and running on our PlayStation Classic through Bleem Sync. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright, so as I mentioned, we are going to go ahead and get OpenLaura up and running on our PlayStation Classic, and if you're not familiar with it, it is a software version of Tomb Raider uh, that runs on either PC, PS1, whatever it happens to be. Um, but it allows you to play two-player co-op and as well as that, you can actually play Tomb Raider in first-person shooter mode. So that is actually really cool. I'm not going to waste your time talking about it too much. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to jump right on into it. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that we have our USB with our Bleem Sync build popped into our computer. Mine is, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it over here. So as you guys can see, I've got my Bleem Sync USB loaded up onto my computer. I do want to make note this is specifically for Bleem Sync 1.2. If you are running version 1.1 or anything previous to that, you are going to want to update to the latest version, as well as make sure that you are on the latest kernel. Uh, that may or may not be necessary specifically for this game, but it is good practice to be on the most up-to-date firmware that you can have, and the latest kernel is part of that. I will leave links in the description down below for you guys to follow on how to get updated to 1.2 if you need it. So the next thing that we're going to need is the OpenLaura folders. So I actually have access to this as a pre-release or as a release candidate. This is not up in public just yet, but at the time of the video releasing it will be. So as always, I will leave links in the description down below for you guys to download this file. We're going to go ahead and right click on this file and we're going to extract it to its own folder. I've got that right over here now. Uh, we're going to double click on this folder and we're going to take a look inside. As you can see, we have an open Laura folder and then within that we're going to have a launcher and we're going to have some uh, PNG images as well as a readme. The readme is going to give you instruction. You can choose to open that up in any text formatted software, whether that be Notepad++, Notepad, uh, whatever it happens to be. I'm just going to show you guys the easiest way to get this up and running so you guys can go ahead and skip reading that if you want. We're going to go back to the root of our folder here and what we're going to do is we're actually going to want to copy this over to our uh, Bleem Sync build. So what we need to do is navigate to Bleem Sync on our USB. Then we're going to go into the ETC folder. Then we're going to go into Bleem Sync again. Then we're going to go into SUP. And then we are going to go into Launchers. From here, we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste our OpenLaura folder. And we're going to dump it into our Launchers folder. So now we've got the OpenLaura launcher. It should populate on our Bleem Sync UI carousel but we're gonna still need to get access to the actual data files and audio files of the Tomb Raider game in order to get the game to run properly. So this is relatively easy. What you can do is do a few things. If you've got a bin file for the Tomb Raider PS1 game, that will work. Additionally, if you have the actual disc for the game, which hopefully you do if you've got a backup of it, you can pop that into your computer and you can get that loaded up. What you're going to need is an application called JPSX Deck. Now this application is going to be able to allow us to open up our bin file for Tomb Raider and locate our data, uh, video, and audio files to extract. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to open up my directory where I've got all of my ROMs. So here's my bin queue files for my Tomb Raider ROM. As you can see, it has got a ton of tracks and that's totally okay. So if you've got something that looks similar to me, I think this one's got like 50 something odd tracks in it. Uh, that's totally fine. It's not gonna cause any problems. If you only have one bin queue, that's perfectly fine too. Additionally, you can use uh, an ISO or if you have the original disc, that's also going to work just the same. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys, that's kind of what I'm working with. We're going to need to open up that software I just mentioned, JPSX Deck, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that open right over here. So it's right over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this folder, and as you can see, we've got the option to open and analyze file along the top. Now I'm going to leave a link in the description down below for you guys to go ahead and download this application. Uh, it's really easy. It's right on GitHub. Just download it, install it. You may need to update your Java plugin, uh, but it'll prompt you to do that throughout the entire installation process. So feel free to do that. It just takes a few minutes. Then we're going to go ahead and hit the open and analyze file. 
Then we have to navigate to our folder. So I'm already pre-navigated there, uh, but essentially you're just gonna need to locate your file and you're just gonna highlight your uh, first track for your bin. If you only have one bin file, that's fine. But if you've got multiple, you want to highlight the very first bin. We're gonna go ahead and hit open. Perfect, now it says that it's a success. It's read everything properly. We're gonna close and then it's gonna populate on the left-hand side. What we need to now do is we need to locate a directory where we want to extract all of these files to. So what we're going to do on the right hand side over here where it says save and then directory, we're going to double click on this button right here. It's going to open up an option to where we want to save it. So we're going to click on desktop and then we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name this folder Tomb Raider. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'm just uh, going to name it Tomb Raider just so it's easier to find. Got to make sure I spell it correctly though. We're going to hit OK. And then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find that file right in our desktop right here. We're gonna hit open and that's perfect. And now we know it's going to save to that Tomb Raider folder on our desktop so it's nice and easy to find. So there are a bunch of files in here. We don't need them all. The ones that are important to us are this Dell data, FMV, and PSX data. Now what you can do is you can go through each folder individually and copy the files over, but I found that to be a little bit tedious. The easiest thing to do is to go down to the bottom over here and you can select all files. You wanna hit select, and then you can see that all the files, including the top two have been selected and within the folders, all of those files have been selected as well. Then we wanna hit save all selected and it's going to say, we're gonna copy all of these files over to the directory that you've told us to copy. Do you wanna start? We're gonna hit yes. And it's just gonna transfer those files over. It doesn't take very long. Uh, and actually I think it's all done now. So once it's all done, it doesn't disappear or anything. You actually have to manually close it. So we're gonna hit the close button. And then we're actually done with the software. We no longer need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. It's gonna ask if we want to save uh, our index. We don't need to, cause we haven't made any changes to it. And now I'm just going to pull over my Tomb Raider folder, which should be right here. And when I double click on it, you're going to see all of the files that we're going to need are actually in there. So that's perfect. Uh, what we're going to do now is copy the files we do want from here, our data and audio and video files from here and transfer them into our Open Lara folder. So we need the Dell data folder. We need the FMV folder and we need the PSX data folder. We're gonna go ahead and transfer those guys over to our Open Lara folder. That's gonna take a few minutes just cause you're about 300 megabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip through that. So uh, we've got our three files transferred over now. We've got Dell data, FMV and PSX data. This folder right here, we don't need it anymore. You can throw it in the trash. You can save it for later. It doesn't matter. Those extra folders and files in there, we're not gonna use for this process. So uh, you can do with it as you please. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of it. Now that's pretty much all we needed to do. We now have our open Laura that's going to run properly as a launcher on our BleemSync UI. All that's left for us to do right now is to pop our USB out, throw it into our PlayStation Classic and load up our console. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll see you guys in a second. All right guys, so here we are on our boot menu. The first thing that we need to do is just hop right on over to our BleemSync UI and we're gonna enter into that. All right, so here we are. As you can see, I've got all my games loaded up and we are gonna go ahead and start scrolling through until we get to the O section. Uh, this will be placed in alphabetical order, so you'll have to navigate over to it. And here we are. So we've got OpenLaura right here. We've got Xprogger as our developer with a 2019 release date. Now it says that it's one player, but it is not. This is a multiplayer Tomb Raider game uh, and it's actually really cool. You can play two player co-op. In order to do that, you are going to need two PlayStation Classic controllers plugged into your PS Classic. Now I'm just using the stock controllers that came with the console. And of course I've got an OTG adapter in the back. So that way I've got my networking up and running and my BleemSync build running out of the back port of my PlayStation Classic. Now I do want to mention this game currently is only supported with the PS Classic controllers. If you're using a PS4 controller, this is not going to work. You are going to end up not being able to navigate the menus properly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing up and running. And I'm going to show you guys just a couple of the features. So now that we've got a little bit of video happening, I am going to mention that when I was working with this before I started working on the video, 
uh, I ended up with a lot of uh, audio glitches and some weird popping noises, and it turned out that just my file, my bin file, my Tomb Raider original source file, uh, was a bad was a bad uh, version of it, I guess. So I had to locate a new version, and with the new version, I was able to get around it. So if you are having any sort of graphical or audio issues, it's likely that your bin Q file is either a bad uh, dump or it is a bad ISO or whatever it happens to be. So you may have to source a different file. We're just gonna go ahead and skip through this and right into our main menu. So as you can see, we've got uh, our menu here. We're gonna hop into the passport here and I'm just gonna jump straight into a new game. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the cutscenes. And here we are. So as you can see, we are playing Tomb Raider. The first thing that I'm going to make note of is that you can actually play, as I mentioned, in first person shooter mode. What you need to do is you need to hold the L1 button and press the X key. And now as you can see, I'm in first person mode. So I can actually grab my guns, I can shoot things, and I can play this way if I want to. I'm not a huge fan of first person shooter mode, so I'm gonna go ahead and back out. You just, all you have to do is again, hold the L1 button and press the X key and you are back out. The, probably the most fun thing about this game though is that you can actually play two player co-op. Really simple to do. All you need to do is make sure both controllers are plugged into your PlayStation Classic. And on the second controller, you need to press the start button. So, and there we go. As you can see now, I've got two different Laura Crofts on screen. And I'm trying to control both at the same time, but uh, it's kind of hard because I only have one hand on each of the D-pads. But this is 100% playable. Each of you guys has your own life. Uh, and it is, it is full on a two player co-op where you guys can each do your own thing and play through the level uh, completely on your own. You don't have to stay within uh, each other's visibility on the screen. To back out of it, all you need to do is press the start button again on either controller and you will reset back into first player mode. So that's pretty much it guys. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys goof around and play around with this. Get this thing loaded up and have some fun. This is an awesome little mod that we've got for the PlayStation Classic. And it's uh, it's completely refreshing to be able to play this game in a completely new way with a buddy next to you or, or doing anything like that if you like playing first person shooter mode. Uh, that's all I've got for you for this video. Thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and I'll talk to you guys again later.